I'm getting like Mayan Aztec vibes from this type of armor. But you guys can correct me if you guys want. But yeah, Negmothar, you guys already know about him. He's basically a Hydra must have, an S plus champion when it comes to Hydra. But there are other places that you can use him in. When I had the Chronom account that I just gave away, I actually pulled Negmothar and he was an absolute GOAT. I mean, you can make him fast for Arena and that would help your team to go first, setting you guys up so that you um, basically win the speed battle because uh, like it or not, we're still in a uh, speed meta type of arena where if you go first, more than likely you're going to win. His A1 places the decrease attack, his A2 places a decrease speed and a leech, his A3 will increase speed and your turn meter. So the way that you're going to want to use him is to use his A3 to boost turn meter and place increased speed on your champions. Then you're going to want to roll into your A2, placing the decrease speed and your leech. And this is the same across all content within raid whether you're going to take him into the dungeons whether you want to take him into hydra or arena this is pretty much what you're going to be doing if you can pre-program him to do a3 into a2 that's what you're going to want to do decreased speed helps you to go faster obviously increased speed helps you to go faster as well and you're always going to want to be creating that um dissonance between you and your enemies the dark fey should I even mention the Dark Fae? If you can use this guy in Dark Fae, use him in Dark Fae as well. I mean, he's got the increase to speed in all battles by 19%. He's very useful. His passive will fill the champion's turn meter by 5% each time a debuff on an enemy is removed, transferred, or expired. He's going at 104 base speed. Guys, he's fast. All right, he's going to be moving super fast. I was talking about him in the context of Arena. I just want to give you guys some... Uh, examples of what I mean. So, depending on how you have your <laughs> Nekmothar set up, I I'm laughing because Lydia is actually faster. Now, I don't use Nekmothar in Arena, and so that's where the difference is going to be here. But what he can do is boost turn meter, place the increased speed on everybody. We're going to place the decreased speed on everybody over there, plus the leech. If you guys notice, Provoke just popped off right here on Mountain King and Deliana. I actually have Cursed Gear on Lydia. That's where the Hex is coming from, in case you're wondering. And Provoke. Provoke. I have Provoke set on Nekmothar, and that is specifically because I use him in Hydra, and I'm going to show you guys that in a bit. But let's go ahead and um, run these hands real quick. Boom. Oh, not entirely boom, but you guys get the idea. There you go. In the dungeons, I'm not going to delve too much into it, but like you could definitely benefit from having him in the dungeons, especially early on, because having a leech with his A2 and decreased speed. Um, well, let's talk about the leech. Having leech means that you can heal. It's like a built in lifesteal almost because you're healing by, I think it's like 18% of the damage that you guys deal. In the Demon Lord, if you're going to go up against the Demon Lord, Nekmothar, especially if you don't have an unkillable team, you could definitely use him there. I'm going to show you guys how I have him built. I do have two of him. I plan to build another one soon for another Hydra team. But this is the Nekmothar that I have. Nope. The stats are not going to be the absolute best because I don't have that much um, you know, Provoke gear to begin with. Provoke. 30% chance to place Provoke, which means that whoever you're going to go up against who receives the Provoke is only going to attack Nekmothar with their A1. Can't do anything else. And then, of course, I have him in Immortal because I want him to stay alive. He's going to be my support champion. I mainly use him in Hydra so that he can provoke the head that cleanses. I don't want that head to do anything. I'll show you guys the pieces of gear that I have. Then we're going to roll into all the other stuff. Prioritizing speed, accuracy, and survivability stats. That's basically what I'm going for here. Speed, survivability, and survivability stats. The gauntlets, this says attack. If I could, I would probably get something like HP percent or defense percent uh, attack. He's not going to be really here for damage, so I'll change these gloves out eventually whenever I... Let me, let me see if I even have anything right now. Let's just see. Any immortal immortal glove? No, I don't. Okay. So when I get better rolls on a on a glove for, for immortal, I'll definitely replace that. And accuracy on the chest is okay, as long as you can get a decent amount of survivability or have a team centered around... Uh, keeping everybody else alive put defense on the ring counter attack is also pretty nice because again he's in provoke so if you can provoke that'd be great and then um hp on the uh amulet as well as accuracy 
Of course, you could fully um, fully ascend this. You could ascend uh, the gear here and chant even further. But we're rocking almost 5,500 HP, a little under 3K defense, and just shy just shy of 240 speed. Ideally, I would have him going faster with more defense and more HP. The accuracy is just about where I want him. Usually when I'm talking about Hydra, I aim for a minimum of 400 accuracy. If you guys have a blessing on him, I would suggest using Cruelty. Cruelty will decrease the defense of your enemy uh, for the entire duration of the fight, every time he hits. Now, for now, it's only going to be up to 5% going up against the Hydra heads, and that's okay with me. If you guys have any other suggestions, let me know. Here are the Masteries. As always, do not blindly copy Masteries, but feel free and blindly copy these Masteries. Lasting Gifts to increase the duration to have a chance to increase the duration of the increase speed master hexer to increase the duration of your um, decrease speed and your leech taking speed and accuracy buffs here speed accuracy cycle of magic is also pretty nice all right so i'm going to show you guys my nightmare team for hydra and it has necmothor i put him in the lead because he has that speed and I'm using the Venus Cupidus combo along with Shamael and Ugo. This is pretty much a full auto team. And yeah, we'll run it. I will talk a little bit about it here and then I'll skip to the end so you guys can see. Even though the head that cleanses isn't here, there is still some value. There's still a lot of value. What am I saying? That Necmo does provide. And like even up against this head, having decreased attack, even on Nightmare, you're going to want to have that because this head smacks really hard, dude. If you don't have decreased attack on him, when he does pop off, he really pops off. The increase the speed and the boost the turn meter is going to help you and your team cycle through your moves a lot faster. So you can dish out more damage, you can place those heals, uh, whatever the case may be, you can get her done. Okay, so right now, look at this. The head right here, the head of wrath has decreased attack. I, I do remember this. Before I had somebody who consistently placed decreased attack on Hydra, and this wasn't even on like Nightmare, this was like on Hard or something. I remember struggling with this head right here, but I don't honestly even need to aim down on this head now that I can consistently place a decrease attack. And it also, of course, helps to have the block buffs. I'm not trying to diminish what Ugo brings, but it's just crazy. And um, like having decreased speed so that the Hydra heads cannot move that fast is also a boon to have on your team. So if you pulled Necmothar, I'm telling you guys, Definitely build him out, kit him out, he's worth it. Okay, perfect. So this head just popped up and now we have the provoke. So normally this head will do a full cleanse and all of these debuffs that I have on the Hydra heads would disappear. Or sometimes this head, the head of decay, will place the shield. And anybody who has the shield, who um, receives that buff, will have everything cleansed off and they get a, a nice shield on top of them. But because we have Necmothar and Necmothar in a provoke set, we don't have to worry about that. The other thing is sometimes Necmothar gets provoked, but guess what? Because it's an AoE, his moves are AoEs, we can still have a chance to place the provoke. Again, it is only a 30% chance, so you know I'm not going to be too harsh on it, but still, well, sometimes it procs back to back to back to back. It, it's just the nature of the beast. It's just the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah, I also have a Cupidus, or sorry, not Cupidus, um, Venus in a hex set. Look at there, another provoke that popped off. It's amazing. So now this, if I didn't have Provoke, this champion, or sorry, this Hydra head who has my uh, Shamael right now would probably get the shield because they're the ones with the lowest, or this head is the one with the lowest amounts of uh, HP, making it harder to release my champion. And we are about to reach the one key here. We're at 34, almost 35 here. Uh, look at me, look at this head, dude. Like we were able to keep provoked up for a good duration and this head has been trying to use his a2 for the longest time but it's not happening because of the provoke 36.6 30 36.6 36.6 36.6 